This is part one in a three session video how to make a rough coated Jack Russell Terrier ready to go to show. Hello and welcome back in Transgroom TV. Today it's all about Jack Russell Terrier rough coated and it's Luna, it's our dog, my dog, our family dog. She's very much loved by my two children, William, Emma, and my husband, Darren Cook. She's our princess. Luna goes everywhere with us. We don't go to a restaurant if there's no dogs allowed. Um, Luna goes on holiday with us. Uh, virtually, she's always with us. She comes to the office every day and she's maybe a bit spoiled, but you know, she's our princess and she has a fantastic temperament. She's bred by the Touchstar Kennel in Italy and her name is Unbelievable Schwank, but we call her Luna. This is Luna, the Jack Russell Terrier. As you can see, she's very hairy. Luna was the last time groomed 12 weeks ago at the Crufts Dog Show. For 12 weeks we haven't touched Luna at all and now we're gonna groom Luna and we make her ready for the next show, which I don't know when it is, but we'll just do the video to make Luna show ready. This is not gonna be possible in one go, so we're gonna have three goes. In three times, you will see gradually Luna getting show ready. Each time there's two weeks in between the grooming. We've put a link of all the products I'm using in this video down below, so if you are interested in anything, just scroll down and click on the link and you will see where you can find the products. I just want to say to you, I've been a groomer for a very long time, since I was 14 years old. I'm a professional groomer. Before that, I've done a lot of dog shows, a lot of dog handling, and I want to share my passion with you, but I never claim I'm the best groomer in the world. So enjoy my videos. When you have any questions or doubt about anything, you can always contact us down below. We will always answer all the questions. Although I didn't groom Luna, I did groom Luna's nails. And every week or two weeks, I groom Luna's nail with the nail grinder. As you can see, it's very, very, very easy. I just hold the nail grinder, go up and down, and this way I don't have to clip. It's very comfortable, she's used to it, and it's fun in using as well. The Showtech nail grinder is chargeable with a USB, but it runs for 18 hours, so you don't need to worry about loading it a lot. You can use it for a very, very long time. It has lithium batteries. It's just a very smart way of keeping your dog's nails extra short. You see me clipping away the hairs in between the pads, and I'm using the Heinegger Mini Style it's a very easy clipper, it's very light, it doesn't vibrate very much, it doesn't make much noise and it's just a fun way of going in between the little pads, the sensitive pads. The way I like to hold the little pads is I hold like the outside two fingers and then I turn it not too much to make it comfortable for the dog and when you do that you can scoop out all the little hairs. I have to say, in the summer or in the winter, I tend to leave a little bit more hair. If it's for inside, it doesn't matter. But when you go on holiday or when it's very cold, I prefer to leave some hairs to protect the pads and protect the skin from the heat or from the cold. For the genitals area, I prefer to use the style midi because it has an adjustable blade and for these areas, I don't like to go extra short because of some hairs need to stay there because that's very sensitive. And here I'm using the midi. For the ear care, today we are going to use the wipes, the ear care, 
and the large Q-tips. Normally, on average, we do the ears every month. Let me show you how to clean the dog's ears. First, we use the ear care and we fill the full ear. You don't have to be worried because the ear canal is going down and then back up and it's no problem to fill the ear with the ear care product. The ear care product will dissolve all the grease and all the fat and the residue. Afterwards, when we take the Q-tip, all the grease and all the dirt will go into the cotton of the Q-tip. For the outside, we nicely use the ear wipe, which is also special to dissolve all the grease and all the dirt on the outside. And we can even put our fingers in the wipes to go in the ear. For eye maintenance, I usually use eye wipes, no more tear stains and the little eye comb. And here I will show you how to clean out the dirt around the eyes with the eye comb. As you can see, it's very easy and you have all the dirt which is stuck under the hair next to the skin and you can easily scoop it out with the little eye comb. Don't forget to disinfect the eye comb and clean it properly so all the dirt is gone from the eye comb. And now the last step the no more tear stains we use in and around the eye and just with an eye wipe you can clean around the eye to take all the dirt away. If your dog have dirty brown stains under the eyes it can be because the canal between the eye and the nose is blocked and the no more tear stain has a special product inside which takes care of the swelling so if the canal is swollen, the water can't pass through and it's blocked, the product No More Tear Stains can help you with that. There can also be hormonal reasons. It's also possible because your dog nose is very short, like breeds like Shih Tzu, that you will always have watery eyes and severe stains underneath the eyes. It's also possible that your dog has a problem with its diet and when you change to for example, grain-free food, that the tear stains will go less or even go away. It's also possible that the eyelid is inverted and uh, the eyelashes are stinging in the dog's eye and that's causing the tear stains. It's possible that it's an infection and all for these reasons, it might be not bad if you have severely brown stains, you go first to the veterinarian to see why your dog has such severe stains under the eyes. Before we start stripping, we need to be aware that the Jack Russell has two types of coat. You have the undercoat, which is very woolly, and you have the top coat. So before we start, we need to take some of the wool out, and that's called carding. And we card because in the follicle there's a lot of hairs because the dog keeps producing hair and hair and hair. We need to take some of the wool out to make some place available in the cuticle and then there's going to be new hairs, healthy, hard hair, rough coat. And if we leave all the wool in there, it's like suffocating. So we need to card as much as possible to make place. We start with brushing, even before the carding. So just a little brush to make sure all the hairs are open and there's no mats or anything in the coat. And here we start the carding. It's just like combing the coat, but we don't keep the comb uh, vertical. We co keep the coat like in 90 degrees and you just, without pushing too much or, you know, downward pushing so we don't hurt the skin, we just just comb through and as you can see all the dead woolly hair is coming out very easily. Here in slow motion you see me using the Showtech Fine 40 Teeth Extra Large Stripping Knife. I always start with this stripping knife because it's very easy and it go, all the hair go very quickly out and then eventually I use another tool to see if I took all the hairs out 
the other two is the shed stopper and with the shed stopper because it's even finer all the hairs which I didn't take out with the stripping knife I take away with the shed stopper. There's a lot of stripping knives on the market and sometimes it's very overwhelming uh, which one to choose to do which job. For me I keep it very simple the more work and the longer the coat, I like coarse stripping knives and then the medium is for when you're nearly finished and then for the finishing or for making the last bit on the show dogs, we use the more finer knife. Then for the very sensitive areas like the ears, we have the stripping stone or the stripping sticks which have no knives or sharp edges and you just with your thumb take all the hair and I like to use these very much. Luna usually has a rolling coat and a rolling coat is a stripping coat which you strip very regularly. Normally Luna is stripped every two weeks or even when she goes to multiple shows every week but as you know now she hasn't been touched for three months. The system for rolling coat is you have different layers and each time when you groom you only take the top layer out and you let the other layers grow. With a rolling coat it's very easy because certain areas of the dog you can leave longer. For example the top line or when you have a very skinny dog in the side you can leave it longer or when you have a dog which back is too much up or too down you can leave hair wherever you want because you have the different layers. You can style the dog better with a rolling coat. I'm using the Yento Coros stripper to start stripping Luna. Before I was using the stripping knife I tested myself and the stripping knife. We take just a, a piece of black paper or black cloth and we keep on stripping and after stripping we hold the hair and we sprinkle it out on the paper and then you can closely look at the hairs. If the hairs are complete in one piece it's fantastic but when the hairs are broken it means that either your technique is not good for stripping or the stripping knife is too sharp. I'm lifting the coat with my fingers and with my hand I'm not pushing but I'm firmly putting my hand on the dog and this is also meant to keep the skin tight because when you are stripping you are pulling out you can't strip out too much at the time, a few hairs at the time is more than enough and when you keep your left hand on the dog you keep the skin tight to make it more comfortable for the dog. Because I'm working with a rolling coat and with different layers I'm starting in the back because of the system I'm using this and it's easier to go from the back to the front than it is to go from the front to the back. Here you see in slow motion how with my left hand and my fingers I let some hairs go and I pluck them with my right hand. Then it's actually repeat, repeat, repeat. Here you see me going with the palm pad from the bottom to the top and then again I'm gonna strip some coat out. And the tail it's very easy just don't take much off at one place. I like to like brush and take a few hairs and go to the back and brush again take a few hairs from the top and then go to the back and I don't like to pluck a lot of hairs at the same place. This way you will have a more natural finish. I'm trying to go very short at the tail and then going some routing and her bum and then where her leg is at the back I take the back leg up and where it goes in I go extremely short. Here you see me showing with my finger at the tail to then the, the angulation and here on the drawing you will see the angulation we need to have a good style for the back end of the Jack Russell.
I advise you to go stripping uh, using the palm pad and contour direction against the hair growth and then looking at the point and stripping and also every time you strip you go to another area you go from top to the bottom or you go from the left to the right but don't strip at the same place or else if you keep on stripping at the same place suddenly you'll have a bald spot and that's not what we want at the tail and around the genitals it's a very sensitive so here we do really a little bit at the time you can scissor around the anus without a problem but just don't go very far out and you can scissor around the anus but stay around the anus and don't scissor the whole bum when you are stripping you need to strip like that I'm going to show you from the side but never like this if you do this you can cut instead of strip out and if you are using the wrong stripping knife which is too sharp when you test yourself you will see on your piece of paper on your you know which is a contrast color of the hair if the hairs are broken it's because it's clipped and not stripped out and here you see me on the legs using a stripping stone I like to use a stripping stone to do the fine hairs because you can grip them very well and the stripping stone you just put the stripping stone in your palm and you let the hairs slide against the stripping stone and the hairs you want to pull out you, you put your thumb on the stripping stone and you stop the hairs from sliding through and you will nicely pluck them out also here I'm testing myself and I'm seeing that I'm actually pulling out all the hairs if you would like to have nice legs on a terrier each time you groom you need to take the top layer also from the legs that means that there's going to be new hairs growing underneath and the new hairs are going to be short and thick and it's going to create lots of volume in the dog's legs if you don't groom the top layer out it's going to be fine and it's going to fall down and in between there's going to be nothing there's going to be no volume in there you see me using the comfy stripping stone 13 millimeter stripping stick this is actually very fun to work with you can just put your thumb on the stick and take the right amount of hairs out and you don't have to worry about breaking off you can very easily pull out all the hairs necessary here you see me using the stone in slow motion and here you see a little bit a line coming back with the palm pad you see me like lifting up the coat and then very easily you see where you need to strip the next time there's a lot of brushing when you especially when you come to the ends because also with the Jack Russell you see me doing the legs the side of the legs needs to be like flat and then the front of the back leg needs to be having some hair or else when you groom all the hair off from the back leg the dog will look very long so at the knees we leave some hair but you can't see any lines and it needs to look as naturally as possible so here we comb a lot we brush we comb so and then we we, we strip and in the different areas but not too much at the same place at once to have a very natural finish and then gradually we're going to the front and as you can see Luna is very sensitive in these areas so we have to do a little bit at the time and here I'm trying to keep the skin tight with my other hand and it's not working very well and here I'm putting Luna on her back to be able to strip out the tummy and her leg is going upward so the skin is tight and it's easier for stripping strip, comb, repeat I'm adjusting Luna's overall look by grooming more where I need to groom to make her back look straight and when you have a dog which is okay with lying down it's very easy we did that with Luna since she was a puppy 
So now Luna thinks it's normal sometimes during the stripping she has to line down. If your dog doesn't think it's normal to do that, it might be difficult. It's very important when you are grooming a terrier, in between the grooming you stack the dog and you go down to look at the sides and you see how much bending the, the back is and where you need to groom so your back is not going in or having too much of a bevel. Here you can see between my hands this is the back and this needs to be as straight as possible and we can't do this as once because now it's been 12 weeks ago and we don't have enough layers under the coat to do this but we gradually will go towards a more straight back. We fill up the between the neck and the back part to have a flowy line so the dog doesn't look like he's very long. We don't overdo this with a Jack Russell Terrier, but a little bit of top line goes a long way. As you can see here on figure one of my drawing, this is how the Jack Russell should look like. And as you can see in figure two, it looks like the dog has a long back because the top line is too short and you see a corner. And then the sides, the neck and the shoulders need to be as short and as flat as possible. Th there we don't leave any hairs ever. We make it quite short. By short, I'm not saying you can see the skin through it, but it needs to be short and flat. And when your dog doesn't have any undercoat or when it's a long time ago and your dog needs to go to a show, it's no use doing the shoulders and the neck. Just a few weeks, you need to do minimum four or five weeks before the show to have a perfect finish. Now we are doing the head. And because it's very difficult to do the head, it's like greasy and very difficult to grip. I'm having some help from our chalk powder. It's very easy to apply. You can just shake the bottle or use a little pot with the, our special brush. And I like to use our special brush because it goes very easy and very quickly. So what does it do? It, it's like rough, it's because it's calcium carbonate. And um, because it's so rough, you have a better grip. Here you see the hairs coming out more quicker and more easy. Of course, we don't overdo it. We try to do little bit hairs at the time and keep on stripping. Normally, she goes on the table much more, but this time she was very easy and relaxed for 12 weeks. So now it's taking a bit longer. So here for the ears, I'm using the stripping knife to start. And here you see me taking a little bit hairs off at the time. Because there's a lot of hair on the ears, I'm using a stripping knife. Or else, if there's only a little bit, a stripping stick is better. Or even finger condoms. But today, because there's so much hair on there, I'm using the stripping knife because it's easier. And I've tested the stripping knife, there's no hairs being broken. If there's no hairs being broken after testing, it's totally safe to use the stripping knife. The first session is coming to an end. And as you can see, there's thinned and here and there modeled and styled a little bit, but far from finished. Now we have to wait until the new hairs are coming. We will wait two weeks. There's going to be no new hairs yet, but now we know between here and four weeks, everywhere we have stripped out a hair, there's going to be a new hair. When we wait two weeks, again, there's going to be a new hair after the first new hair. And that's what we're creating. That's why we are going to wait two times two weeks. And then you will see a big difference. Here you see some before and after pictures from Luna. And next session will be all about more styling, more finishing the head, more the feet, and overall making ready to go to the dog show.
If you saw any products which are of interest to you, please look down below to the links. This was Kitty for Transgroom TV. Don't ever hesitate to ask questions down below. Please subscribe if you want to have a notification from new videos which are coming out and enjoy grooming. <music>